Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today in the co-captain's chair, once again, Mr. Stephen Reed. Good day to you, sir. How are you? Good day to you. I'm excellent, Peter. I'm really good. You give me hard assignments, Peter, don't you? You give me hard... This was hard for me too, man. I'm telling you. Stephen and I were just moaning and groaning before we went on the air about how difficult this one is and the next show you're going to see. Uh, two bands that have catalogs that are like every album is just like amazing. Yes. There's really not much separating the catalog, the albums of the catalog of Alter Bridge. So Alter Bridge, a band, as some of you probably know, kind of the band that formed out of the ashes of Creed. So we've got uh, three former Creed members led by Mark Tremonti on guitar, who met up with a guy named Miles Kennedy, singer extraordinaire, also very good guitar player as well. They formed this band Alter Bridge who, uh, at least in this country, have pretty quietly, you know, put together a pretty strong following. They're, they're not as big as I think they should be, but they're pretty well known around the world, I would think, at this point. But yeah. I, I don't know. I listen to these guys. And I'm like, why are they not like massive superstars? I just don't understand. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the, the times we live in or whatever, but I just don't understand why this band isn't like mega, mega big. Yeah, over here they fall into that category that seems to have come around now where they can play enormous domes but they can only play them on a bill so they can headline they can headline shows but they will bring bands like shinedown and blackstone cherry who really can probably play these size of venues on their own too but they all seem to kind of come and interlink with other bands that are around that size i think to make sure they fill them which is a great thing and you also yeah. get a great night's entertainment because you tend to find that you get three or maybe four bands that are just outstanding in one evening and i mean yeah. who can argue with that so I think, yes, I think in the terms of the modern day kind of hard rock scene, they're almost as big as you can get, but they're still not as big as the, as the music deserves. But that's maybe a sign of the times. That's maybe, is it possible to go over the top now? I'm not really sure. Do you know? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's like, and you know, when you describe, it's hard, it's hard to describe their music too. So you just said hard rock and that's what they are. Yep. They carry a little bit of that kind of like post alternative grunge, sort yeah, of, but not. In there. Yeah. But their their music is very like well produced, soaring vocal harmonies, heavy metal, crunchy guitar, and yeah. you know shredding solos. So it's it's there's a good chunk yeah. of metal in their I would music. Say back in the day when Kerrang ruled, I would say that we would have called Alter Bridge a heavy metal band. Yeah, yeah. Now because heavy metal is now so much heavier, verging into the extreme set kind of scenes, you can't include a band like Alter Bridge in there. But my youthful self would most definitely have called Alter Bridge a heavy metal band. Yeah. So, you know, but they're not now. But, but you know, you're right, they cross into so many different territories. Yeah, and, and you have to wonder, too, if, um, if we were to go back in time, if Alter Bridge kind of happened, this exact same formula as they are today, back in like 1985 or even in 1995, mm -hmm. would we be talking about them as one of the greatest bands of the last like 30 years? I don't know. Yeah, that's a really hard question to answer, I have to say. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, from the 90s scene, would they even have been given the chance to come through the way they have? I mean, given the band that they came from, because I think a lot of people dismissed Alter Bridge for quite a long time because of the Creed link, whether you like Creed or not, I struggle with them, I have to say. And it did certainly put me on a back foot with Alter Bridge, do you know? I'm, and I'll be honest and say, and I'll answer a question that's been put below a couple of the videos that, that I've been on. This is my eldest daughter's old bedroom, okay? And I'll be honest enough to say that it was her that put me on to Alter Bridge because I kind of saw the Creed link and thought, yeah, I probably don't need to get too involved in that. I'm really pleased that she decided to tell me that I did need to get involved in that because I've been to see them with her and they're outstanding live. Miles Kennedy can bring it, but Mark Tremonti can bring it. I mean, uh, the four of them can bring it. Out outstanding. Yeah, really good. This is yeah, really and good. I'm late to the game too. I mean, I only just got into them, uh, you know, a couple, two albums ago, The Last Hero. That's when I started really getting into this band. Right, okay. And I started like listening to the back catalog. I was like, holy crap. Because I, yeah. I also, it's like, ah, it's a post-Creed wannabe band, yeah. you know, whatever. I don't care. And they were like Creed anyway, night and day for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, oh, Creed, I, had a, Creed had a couple songs that I thought were okay, right? But, but yeah, I, mean, the, I was like, eh. You know, Creed were good at what they did. Creed, Creed were good at what they did. It just didn't have to be something that, that, that really got me too excited. But they weren't a bad band. But I wouldn't have rushed out and bought any of their stuff. But they had some good songs. But 
it's interesting because even what they've done outside of Alter Bridge since then, you know, you know Miles Kennedy with Splash, Tremonti, there's so, what a great amount of music has come out of this band. Yeah. It's quite incredible, to be honest. Yep, exactly. So we're looking at six albums. So yep. Steve and I are going to somehow rank them. I, <laughs> I, I was telling Steve before we went on the air, I must have changed the order on this band on this list five times and i just was like and every twice a day i'm going through I'm like no no that one's got to go before this one's like and in the end it's like i decide you know what i'm not changing this list anymore it's going to sit the way it is i will say i really like all these albums a lot yeah and it's like you know what i'm going with today if you ask me a week from now i might totally change it around i don't know there's plenty to love on all these albums it's just i think there's a couple that i think i like a little bit more but they're all really, really good. So I'll have Stephen kick us off with his number six, and uh, we'll see. We'll see how we match up here. This will be interesting. It'll be interesting to see. Yes. So number six, and I'm starting at the beginning. So this is uh, One Day Remains, 2004. This is the debut album, and I think that this is still a huge departure from Creed. Uh, but there's still a band finding the sound. I mean, the sound is there. Do you know that it's, they're a great hard rock band? I think there's maybe a little bit more of that kind of grunge element that you mentioned. It still continues on to today, I have to say. Uh, not that I really have a problem with most grunge either, I have to say, but that, that's neither here nor there, really. Um, but it confounded the critics because I think that they were dismissed very early on. But Miles Kennedy grabs the attention here because he just, I think he grabs this album and, and it has something to prove, and I think he proves it very well. Um, the production's maybe not quite what we've come to expect from them. Um, it's not quite as sharp, it's not quite as punchy, which doesn't give the, the material the same opportunity to shine. Not, not for me anyway, but then you've still got things like Metalingus here, which is just outstandingly good, uh, and Loving Memory, which is a, a real proper moving you know, song. It's Open Your Eyes, Broken Wings, lots to like. I mean, we're starting, I'm starting at the, at the, the bottom here, air quotes, nobody likes them, but there you go. I, and I, I still really like this album. So to me, it's, it's a heck of a catalog. Yeah, and it's it's funny. If you go on and um, look at, uh, you know, various reviews online of this catalog or this band, it's like most people put that towards the bottom, but with a caveat mm -hmm. that it's like that it's not bad by any means. And uh, yeah. I, I originally had it at the bottom, and then I listened <laughs> to it a couple more times. I'm like, nah. <laughs> So I have 2010's uh, third album, right? This is old yep. three uh, in my bottom spot. And again, it's a very good album. It really is. I think for me, the only reason I put it at the bottom is I don't have as much of a connection with this album as I do with some of the others. There's a lot of songs on this one. I mean, this one, I've got the U.S. Yep. version. It's got like, what, like 16 tracks. It's like, you know, almost, you know, 80 minutes long. But there's still some really good stuff on here. Uh, you know, Slip to the Void, Isolation is a terrific song. Uh, you know, Still Remains is great, Fall Out, Breathe Again. It's a lot of really good tracks on here. It's well produced. Yeah. It's, it's, it's got that Alter Bridge sound. Maybe a few too many mellower tracks for my taste, because um, some of their albums are a little heavier than others. Mm -hmm. But I think the songwriting is very good on this, whether you like their kind of the mellower side of their, of their work or not, uh, I think all the songs are pretty memorable. Um, I just like the other albums a little bit better. Again, there's not much that separates any of these. So, but, uh, so Alter Bridge number three, that's uh, my number six. Well, we're both on one album, and I think what I'm gonna really enjoy here is, you tend to find when, you, when we do these, that we, there's a kind of sections where we agree on, and we're gonna be vastly different on this, I think, which is good when I like that a lot. So number five for me is The Last Hero. Now, to put this in context, when I reviewed this on Sea of Tranquility, I gave this album four and a half out of five. And I stand by that review. So we're talking here, out of six albums, we're talking number five here. And I gave it four and a half out of five, and I stand by that. But as you say, I prefer the other albums over this one. That's not to say that this isn't a great album. And the thing for me is I think this is maybe a little bit more blunt. It's a little bit heavier. I think they were trying to evolve into something slightly different. If there was one criticism of the catalogue that I kind of rethought about when I listened to these again to rank them, is that there's not a huge amount of evolution. They don't all sound the same. The albums are reasonably individual. But you don't think, well, you know, they've come from where they started to where they are now. It is, they've got a sound, and they're just fantastically good at that sound. 
they did try something that, not different, but it's heavier. I think it's a little bit less nuanced more than anything else. But if I want to put on Alter Bridge and rock out and really, you know, hammer it down, I'm still going to pull out this album. That, that, that's how good we are here. Um, show me a leader, my champion, you will be remembered. I mean, the title tracks, just phenomenal. So it's more, for me, it's not, not so much a mood album, because that makes it sound like it's, you know, atmospheric and moody. It's atmospheric and moody, but it stomps in your face while it's doing it. But so re really good. It's still a great album. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, that's my number five as well. And I had it higher. And then, again, I listened to all of these like multiple times over the last week. And I'm just like, it's just ridiculous. And again, this was, this was my jumping on board the Alter Bridge wagon right here. Okay. It's the first right. album I, I heard from them. And, uh, and then I went back and listened, you know, and bought everything else. So I think this is a pretty terrific album. Like you said, four and a half out of five. Yeah, I'd say so. So it just goes to show you the strength of the rest of the catalog, you know, yeah. um, but Show Me a Leader, terrific song. Uh, yeah. I Love My Champion. I think it's a great anthem. I would, thought that would have been like a major hit single for them. Uh, the Other Side is great. Writing on the Wall, it, you know, Island of Fools, the title track, like you mentioned. Uh, it's top to bottom really, really good. It's heavy. It's crunchy. It's metallic. It's hook-laden beyond anything you can imagine from a band yeah. like this. And, uh, yeah, I dig it. But I think I like the others a little better. So, yeah. I switch which is a theme until we get a bit further down more than anything else. Yeah. Interesting. Over there, have they had hits? Are they a hits band? I mean, are people outside of, of the rock scene aware of them? Because they're, they're not really here. I mean, even though they're selling out, you know, venues with tens of thousands, well, I say tens, probably 10,000 in and around there. I would say outside of that circle, over here, nobody knows who they are. They're just a non-existent entity. They don't get radio play, nothing. Yeah, I, you know what? Like, if you just like talk to people in the street and do you, have you listened to Alter Bridge, I would think eight out of ten probably have no idea who they are, even here. But yet, you go and you look up like their, you go onto their Wikipedia page and you start looking at stats. I mean, their sales are healthy. Yeah, their you know weird rock, modern rock playlist, you know numbers are very good. Their download uh, sales are very strong. Their streaming uh, numbers, you know. On, are, are very strong. They're well played on, uh, you know, satellite radio and all that kind of stuff. But yet, they're not a household name here by any means at all. Yeah, I we'll figure, right? I, you know, I'm weird. Yeah. And again, maybe that's just more of like that's modern music, right? It's not just Alter Bridge. That's like most bands of this nature, I guess, these days. You know, yeah. they're, they're certainly not known like a Foo Fighters here. Yeah, and the, yeah, they're definitely not known the way the Foo Fighters are here. I mean, if you put on mainstream rock radio here which really is quite vanilla that has to be said um there's a couple that are okay to be fair but if you put on really mainstream rock radio you can guarantee you'll hear the, the Foo fighters three or four times a day alter bridge once a month yeah if yeah, you're lucky weird. maybe not even that and i and i don't get that because there is hooks there is choruses so you know that they are a band where you can walk away singing a song for, for the next three days yeah. So why that doesn't translate to, to radio play, I'm not very sure. I don't know. And I think most like, like metal fans know who they are. And, and it's interesting, though. Like the metal fans know who they are. And they're like, oh, yeah, Alter Bridge. Yeah, that's those old Creed guys. Yeah, they're not heavy. And, but yet they may have never heard them before because that was always my assumption, too. And then I listened to them like, these guys are really heavy, actually. I mean, yeah. Yeah. really heavy at times. It's yeah. not death metal heavy, obviously. But um yeah, I, I just think a, a, a lot of people just haven't really gone to discover them. And like, once you do, you're like, wow, this is not what I expected. Because they got that kind of creed stigma, I think, that's going to follow them throughout their career. But, you know, like Miles Kennedy played with Slash. A lot of people like Slash, right? So he's, he's somewhat of a known quantity. I don't know. It's weird. It's just weird. Like I said, I, think, I just think I'm really shocked, again, not being into these guys for that many years, that they're, just, they're not enormous. Because I think they should be. Yeah, I, I think in modern terms, they, they are one of the very few proper classic rock acts to kind of, that should have broken out. It's difficult. I mean, I was going through these albums and you, you see the era in which they've been released and I can't put my finger on another band that have been this good, this consistent, making a style of music that it's maybe a little heavy to say it should ever have been mainstream. But if anyone was going to make that breakthrough, to me, it should have been Alter Bridge. 
and I do think that they are this, possibly the standout act of, of this decade in this genre of music. And yet even still, they can't. That maybe shows what we're up against, I think, more than anything else. Because to try and get an act like this on television or, as I say, mainstream radio or whatever it is these days that, that gets bands over the top and out there, it would appear it just isn't possible, you know, because I think this is the proof that it's maybe not possible. You know? yeah, it could be. It could be. I mean, every album has at least one can't miss ballad, one heavy rock anthem, right? That's just catchy beyond belief. A couple of face melting, you know, heavy metal type tracks. I mean, there's a little bit of everything on every single album without fail. Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't get it. One of, one of life's yeah. current mysteries, I guess. Why is Alter Bridge not enormous? I don't know. There you go. Answers underneath, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So number four, we are at Walk the Sky for me. Okay, this is, to me, this, is, this album is still, it's an excellent mix of what they do. There's some really heavy stuff on here. There's some really melodic stuff on here. They play about with synths a little bit on this one, which is a little unusual for them. So they are bringing some new flavors along with them. Miles Kennedy's outstanding on this album. Miles Kennedy's outstanding on all of the albums, really. I, I, there's a little bit of a stock record here because it's difficult to find any chinks in this uh, band's armor. I mean, Scott Phillips on drums is fantastic. Uh, where do you, I mean, Brian Marshall on bass. You've got to mention the four of them because they are a unit. It is rock solid. It is in your face. But th th this is, I don't know. I mean, it's difficult to, to say, I mean, somebody's four and a half for, for, for album number five or four and a half for album number four. Do you know, we're, we're in that territory where everything is fantastic. Uh, wouldn't you rather in the deep uh, native sun and if you're looking for something a little bit more adventurous clear horizon is maybe a little more progressive i wouldn't say it's prog but it's a little more progressive godspeed has one of those choruses that to me should have taken them somewhere do you know uh, and even i mean some of the riffs on this album you can imagine you know accompanying background music on television shows where you think what is that riff who is that band uh, do you know, I just can't, I can't find fault. I mean, we're at album number four here, and I would recommend you go out and buy this because it's great. Yeah, and it's their most recent one, right? P yep. Push the new product, right? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, my number four, I'm going to go to the debut, which again, uh, One Day Remains, originally started when I started putting this all together was at the bottom. And then the more I started listening, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I know it's like they kind of really hadn't found their feet yet, but there's just some stuff on, you know what it is? This is one of those albums that like half of the album for me is just absolutely incredible. The other half is good. Yeah. Um, you know, Metalingus, the funny story. <laughs> so back, you probably know where I'm going to go with this. So back at, you know, I used, I grew up watching wrestling, right? WWE wrestling. I mean, I, when I was a little kid, I watched wrestling. I watched wrestling pretty consistently till about like maybe five or seven years ago right? Because my wife hates it. And she just, I got tired of the complaint and I kind of grew out of it, right? Grew out of it in my late forties. Does that make any sense? I don't know. So, <laughs> well, so, so mature. <laughs> I know. Right. But I remember there's a wrestler named Edge who used to come out to this kick-ass metal tune all the time. And I always loved the song. And then when I, you know, bought uh, the last hero and then went and started buying the rest of the catalog, I put this album on. And I'm like, wait a second. I know that song. Never knew it was them, right? Yeah. I love that song. You know, Watch Your Words is face-melting metal, right? Find the Real, One Day Remains, Open Your Eyes, great songs. And, you know, they got a couple of the tunes with the strings on here, which is like, ah, you know, whatever. But um, I still think, and again, not as well-produced as some of their other stuff. It's not as kind of, there, there's like a sheen on all these albums that I kind of really like. I, you know, I sometimes yeah. like more raw-sounding productions, but I don't mind a big bite bright production when you got like that massive guitar crunch that's given all the room that needs to be and you know the vocals like you know like he has and so I still really like this album like I said this one made the most movements in my list I think this right. one and my number my bottom one were both of those were kind of going all over the place in this list when I was trying to put it together but I don't know I like this album I think uh, it's a, a good starting point for them a lot of so, strong songs well for me I would say that the top five all moved as I did this. That's nothing against the debut, um, but it's just the one that I've, it's maybe got some songs on there that are better than any song on some other albums. Yeah, I agree. But it's the, it's the one that I just don't quite connect with from start 
to finish. It's not as consistent top to bottom. And that, that's, that yeah. was kind of my point. I think there's a couple songs on there that I just love so yeah. much, possibly more than anything else in the rest of the catalog. But yeah. the whole album, t- and, and that is what made it creep up because I love those songs so much. But if, you're, if you ask me whether this is as consistent as this or this, maybe not. Yeah. Because I love those couple of songs. That's what, you know, I mean, making this list is so hard. It's just, yeah. uh, yeah. That's what makes it so much fun. You can tell we're struggling with this, right? Yeah. I mean, we're both of us are like, yeah. we're gushing over every album. We're like, and, and I almost what? feel bad putting some of them where they are, right? It's just, I was aware of that. When you write these lists and you do some notes, and I do some notes, believe it or not, then you do, you look at this one, and I just thought, what negative can I bring to this? Because nothing. <laughs> you're not looking to pick things apart, but you're looking to be honest about things and not everything's yeah. fantastic. You can't love every album. And I did look through this and think, hmm, am I a bit altar blind here? Because I like all of this. I don't dislike any of these. Yeah, yeah. There's not really one song that I think, well, they got that wrong. Yeah. So, you know, I, and that's incredible, isn't it? Six yeah. albums where I can't go, well, there's the bit that I can at least say, well, they're human because they weren't very good at that. I can't yeah. do it with any of them. So No, you can't. No, no. There's, there's no stinkers here at all. There's no stinkers here. So number three for me is Fortress. We're in 2013 here. This is their fourth album, I think. Um, I think that, that the rhythm section here, who, for obvious reasons, because Tremonti's some guitarist, he also sings on this one. We've got him on uh, Waters Rising. He's done a little bit more vocals with a band in, in recent times which he does very, very well. And Miles Kennedy, who now plays a little bit more guitar with, with the band and sings phenomenally. I think it's quite easy to forget the, the rhythm section here. Bring it every time. Do you know, it's hard and it's heavy, but there's a little bit of intricacy. And they're clever. They see that there's a really great combination between the two. They rely on each other, but they can move apart at times and bring it back together again and, and not, no pun intended, not miss a beat. You know, and I just really like the kind of expansive way that they do, they do that. Um, and I think that to many people, we're as far in as here before we kind of forget the past a little bit. And Fortress to me was maybe the album where they became Alter Bridge and not that band that Creed used to be. Do you know, and that to me is maybe why it ranked a little higher. It's an album that I liked for that reason. A lot of people suddenly gave them credit for being Alter Bridge, even though there's earlier stuff in this higher up my list. I like that about, about this this period. And I also like, I mean, there's, there's, there's heavy stuff, The Uninvited is a proper, as a stomping track. But you've got, for the way I wrote it down was Acoustic Into Mayhem, and that's Cry of Achilles. And I like that. I do like a song that builds and takes you on a journey. Um, but you've got Cry a River, you've got, you know, uh, Father Than the Son, Addicted, the pain these are great songs you know but they're mature songs as well these are not just a band cranking out you know heavy beats and and, and something you can sing along with i think these are quite mature songs um and as i say i mean i'm seeing albums number five four and five or four and a half out, out of five and we're heading towards full marks here in my in my, in my opinion it's tough stuff and i actually maybe like these albums even more now than when i first listened to them and I would say that's quite rare in modern times because you tend to find that the albums that you listen to back when you were getting into music are the ones that stay with you. Yeah. And you listen to them now and they give you those memories and take you to those places. And I don't know if it's an age thing or just how many albums are released these days in the way that we consume music. Not as much touches me in that way, but Alter Bridges albums have got better with time. I, I, and that's, that's impressive, to be fair. Yeah, and I... Uh... In doing this exercise, because, you know, when when um, Walk the Sky came out, uh, mm-hmm. what was that, 2018 or was that 19? I don't even remember. Walk the Sky was 19. 19. So I listened to that a lot when that came out. Yeah. And at the time, you know, I was like, I was revisiting some of the other ones. But I think since I, you know, put that album away and moved on to other things, I haven't listened to Alter Bridge at all since right. then. And then mm-hmm. to do this exercise, I pulled them all out and I've been listening to them one. I'm like, yeah, it's like, oh, I've just got alter brain, alter brain, alter bridge on the brain nonstop for the last week. And I'm like, oh, and these aren't going away anytime soon now. Yeah. So I'm like back in alter bridge mode. And that's really good when you can kind of revisit a catalog being away from it just for a little while. And like you said, appreciate it almost as more than you did a year yeah. or two or three ago. So um, 
My uh, number three is also Fortress. And I think, you know, this is one of those ones that a lot of people rank pretty high. And I, you know, I, I obviously we're both ranking it pretty high. And I could even rank higher, uh, depending on my mood. But I think that this is, this might be the point in their catalog where they really kind of kicked it into overdrive. Because I think that there's a, there's a difference between this and this. Although my number one came out before this so that makes absolutely yeah. no sense right okay yeah so <laughs> let's throw that out the window never mind um but a great album some great a cry of achilles is just absolutely terrific song yeah and addicted to pain is like a great kick-ass hard rock anthem absolutely you know, bleed it dry waters rising is just absolutely uh, just the uninvited killer the title track is killer cry a river is another terrific song i mean this is just this is a really, really strong album. Yeah. Really strong album. And this this is one of the ones, I, I will admit, in this catalog, the two that I probably have not listened to as much as the others is this one and this one. Right, okay. But these are the two that I spent the most time with over the last week getting this whole list ready. And they're both great. And I, I now I really see what is what everybody you know talks yeah. so highly about with this one. Yeah. I, I fully get it. I raved about Fortress when it came out, and I still rave about it now. I mean, I just have raved about it there. But it's interesting to me what you're saying about three, because three is my two. Um, and that's probably because there are too many songs on this. There, there's a criticism, right? I can find a criticism. There are too many songs on this album. And I probably wasn't overly excited about this one when it came out, which is 2010. Um, and this was the one for me that when I went back and listened to these recently that I thought, no, I got that wrong. Because this was an album I kind of thought, yeah, okay, it's a good debut, doesn't blow you away. Album number two, you think, well, you know, something special. Album number three, I kind of thought, mm, are they trying to live up to their own expectations now? Is it a little bit of going over old ground? I think it's genuinely a case of maybe being just a little bit too long. But then as I've gotten to know over the years, it's one of those albums, I think a lot of albums, maybe 10 years prior to this coming out, when we suddenly started to say, well, I've got a CD and it's 80 something minutes long, let's fill it. Yeah. A lot of bands did for a while. You oh, can yeah. easily go through 17 song albums and go, well, I could lose mm, five of those, so, you know, easily. And I looked through this when I, when I pulled it out and listened to it again recently and thought, I don't think I want to lose any of these songs. I'm pleased that I have all of the songs on this album. And that's like incredible, do you know? So that to me is why actually it ranks so high because to be able to do that across, it depends what, what version you've got. I think there are versions with 14 songs, some with 16 songs, but it's just, it's phenomenal from start to finish. And I think that by this stage, they had really found who they were and had maybe relaxed into that. And I expected to maybe be, you know, hammered over the head a little bit more, if that makes sense, when it first came out. But it's grown on me something fierce over the years. And I really do like this. I mean, if you're looking for the heavy stuff, isolation, if you're looking for something that's a bit more brooding and atmospheric, you've got slip to the void. You've got slower moments, like all hope is gone. It covers the bases, but it's such a consistent journey across this album that I can find we're into five out of five territory now for me anyway other people will, will vary on that and as I say that that was interesting for me because I've ranked some lower that you really have put quite high and, and vice versa on that and I can't argue with anything you've said and that shows to me how difficult a task this was because with most of these you kind of have a rough idea before you go in and you may be surprised yourself with some I listened to these and found it harder after I re-listened than I did before I went into it. And that's, it was quite exciting doing this because I went back and thought, these are even better than I remember. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's why I didn't want to listen to them anymore because I'm like, <laughs> I, 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 we got to just do this damn show already because I'm going to be like, we got to put this off a couple of days because I'm not, I still don't know. And you know what? I'm going to spend more time with that, with three um, after we do this. Cause I think, uh, like I said, I do like it a lot, but I, yeah. my, my guess is I'm not kind of getting it enough if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does, because that's exactly what I would say, that where I was with it previously. I didn't get it enough. And now when I put it on, I kind of feel as I'm almost stopping just to listen to it from start to finish. It's just fantastic. 
Yeah. All right, my number two, I'm gonna go walk this guy. It's the most recent one. Like I said, this was one of my, you know, I think this was in my top 10 of the year uh, last year. And I listened to this a lot and I like a lot of this. And again, another kind of long album, but uh, you know, wouldn't you rather listen to it this morning? I'm like, I love that song. Uh, Godspeed should have been big, huge business for them. I don't understand how that did not, did they even release it as a single? I don't even know. They had to have. I'm not sure. I think they, I think they did. Yes. But they had I mean, to over here, certainly it would have no traction at all. A lot of plays on YouTube and, and that's a lot really, do you know? Yeah. I mean, man, just the lyrics are so good to it. And it just, um, ah, just such a great song. You know, native son is fantastic. Uh, pay no mind walking in the sky, you know, one life, the whole, it just, it's just a great album and it's a good heavy hard rocking album with big bright production and massive guitars and those kick-ass vocals and i gotta say uh mark tremonti is a very good singer as well he perfectly compliments miles kennedy and if you have not heard the tremonti albums where he does all the vocals yeah. those are really good too and that's that band if it can be called a little heavier is a little more thrashier and heavier than Alter Bridge. I think Alter Bridge is quite heavy, but yeah. the Tremonti stuff is not quite as hook laden. It's more aggressive start to finish, but there's still plenty of hooks on those albums too. So I may have to do a Tremonti show at some point if you're up for it. You, yes, I'm up for that. Definitely. Okay, there you go. <laughs> um, I've seen them live as well and they can do that live too. Tremonti were just outstanding live. And, and I'm pleased to say, although it wasn't a massive venue, they actually had to upscale when they played in Scotland. So I think it was the garage, which is maybe a couple of thousand up to the ABC, which is maybe just a little bit more than that. But it was great to see a band actually getting asked to play somewhere bigger because of demand, you know? So, so that was really good. Outstanding live. You get the chance to see them live, go see them live. Cool. So takes us to number one and it takes me to, yeah, Blackbird. Uh, and yeah, this is Stone Cold classic, this, isn't it? Really? I mean, Michael Elvis Basket on productions, he, probably an unsung hero here, I think, not just here, but across most of the catalogue. Because yeah. as you say, the sound is outstanding. And I think that there's a lot of crit criticism about the production on a lot of modern albums. And it sounds current. They're not looking to sound like a retro band, even though they do pull from the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. Mm -hmm. It sounds like an album from now but it still feels like it's big without being overbearing. It's not mastered to death, which right. helps because a lot of albums are so bright these days that it can be a little bit of a hard journey to get to the song and get it in, into your head. But I mean, I can name them all. I can name them all on this and, and just go from, from top to bottom because it's just phenomenal. Rise Today, Walked Over You, Ties that bind. I'll leave some for you, Peter, because it's just a lot. Well, I, I'll, yeah, I mean, it's a great, it's funny because like you go anywhere on the internet and you ask anybody or look at any list or shows or whatever, people talk about Alter Bridge, and this is usually the number one rated album. I will say one thing because you mentioned a lot of the great songs. They're all, every song is great on here. It's a great sounding album. The songwriting is terrific. The playing is terrific. I very rarely, will ever, whether I'm popping a CD in or listening on my iPod or whatever, play a song and then when it's over, play it again yeah. and play it again. I do that with very few songs. Yep. And there is one song in this album where I just did it yesterday. I listened to it four times in a row. I never do that. You know what the song is? <laughs> what is the song? Uh, do you know what the song is? Oh, are you, no, you're going to tell me. because It's I a title track. I, I think the title track is an absolute gem of a melodic hard rock song. I, it's just, it goes through this kind of like, it's like a journey it takes you on. It starts off kind of mellow, kind of atmospheric. And then you got these big doomy guitar chords coming in. And then these great haunting, beautiful melodies. And then these two absolutely sensational guitar solos from these two very fine players. Yeah. And yeah. then it gets heavy again and the vocals catch just like, it's a just absolute great song. And I remember like a couple of years ago, I think it was guitar magazine. It, they did like a reader's poll and this song blackbird won best guitar solo of 
like all time in this poll for, for the, this, these, this guitar Bro, solo in this song, which is the two guys playing. And I think the guys in the band were actually kind of embarrassed that they, they beat out, you know, like Jimmy Page and, you know, the Hotel <laughs> California solo and all this kind of stuff. But they were, you know, they were kind of, and it's like, and I think a lot of old school people were kind of like, what? Alter Bridge, best guitar solo of all time? What? What are they talking about? I listened to this song. I listened to those two guys playing that solo, you know, back to back, and it just sends chills up and down my spine. Are there better guitar solos out there? Probably, but so well crafted. But the song is just like, it's a gorgeous song. It's a dark and doomy song. It's like, it gives you like everything that is Alter Bridge. And the chorus is just absolutely sensational. And yes, Miles Kennedy is just like soaring to the heavens. I know I overuse that terminology when it comes to vocalists, but man, that's what, and that's, you know, one great song on a great album. And it's just uh, the whole album is, and ties that bind. Yeah, ties that bind. What a great yeah. song, right? Kick it's ass. Uh, it's just I think so many really good songs. On the head there, I mean, the arrangements on, I think this album especially, are just incredible. It, it, it's just, there's so many aspects and so many different, as you see, movements within songs that just, you know, take you on the journey and, and pick you up and run with you. And as I say, I'm not trying to be down on modern music. I mean, we review lots and lots of, of new bands and albums, and there's so much good stuff out there that it's hard to even consider who to name check. But I do think that the the sound uh, and the the craft that goes into the Ultrabiz catalogue, to me, I think especially in that in a middle section, albums two, three, and four, for me, and that's maybe why I've ranked the later ones are a little bit lower than I probably anticipated because I love those songs. Yeah. But I do think that just that kind of the whole feel and the mood and the tone of those kind of middle three albums, middle out of six, but you know what I mean? It just, for me personally, raises them, you know, really high, excellent stuff. But I, as you said earlier, I could do this again tomorrow. I probably would still have a number six that's the same and a number one that's the same, but everything else in there is interchangeable because it's just so good it's just so good yeah god yesterday I, like i said i listened to that song four times in a row and then i during one of them i was like i walked outside to go outside and get the mail right so i'm mm -hmm. walking outside i said let the wind take you home blackbird will fly away and i'm singing at the top of my lungs and i don't give a shit who's listening or watching and i'm like that's you know when a song like takes hold of you that way yeah. you know it's a good one right and if you're trying to take on miles kennedy and you're willing to do that at top volume so that everyone can hear you. Well, the song must touch you because none of us are touching no. that. Any <laughs> <other way. laughs> not at all. Not at all. Uh, oh, man. So there you have it, everybody. Alter Bridge. If, if you have never listened to these guys, yeah. please go do so. I, yeah. I'm telling you. Don't, just be, don't take the whole, wow, there are a couple of guys from Creed. It's got to suck. They don't suck. Trust no, me, this I band think as is... well, if you're a fan of proper classic rock and you've never kind of felt that much of the, the current scene does much for you and it's just the classic rock stuff where you just copy any old stuff, pick up a handful of these uh, and you'll discover some amazing music that touches on all of that without trying to be that. And that's the key for me. There's so many really good classic rock bands now who really just want to have been born 40 years ago. 50 years ago, do you know? And, and that's the thing for me. Alter Bridge are happy in the now. And that's maybe the difference with them compared to most, and even the ones that they do tour with and play with and, and they have the same fans with. I think that's maybe what sets them apart. Yep, I agree. And they're damn heavy enough. So for all you metalheads yeah. out there who just have never listened to these guys, they're real. They're pretty damn heavy. Yeah. And they so. bring it live. Yeah. yeah. So. There you have it. Little Alter Bridge action rank in the studio albums. Uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube. All the time, same. There we go. I got almost everybody doing it now. All right. <laughs> so uh, don't go away because uh, Stephen's coming right back because we're going to tackle another like impossible catalog, the uh, great UK progressive rock veteran band called Arena. So that's coming at you next. So stay tuned for Stephen Reed. I am Pete Pardo. We'll see you guys on the flip side. Bye-bye.